So if you're not keeping track of the state inside of the URL in here, instead of just using like use state hook or like a global store, for example, for a search bar in here that actually filters out or through the products in here and actually searches through the products, well, you're probably doing it wrong. And the right approach for this one is actually whenever you actually input something inside of the like input in here, for example, oh, the user actually searches for the actual perfume in here, immediately you notice on top in here, we're keeping the state and the value that is being searched for inside of the URL itself. So that means whenever the URL user is basically going to reload the page in here, it's going to immediately get the same result and going to get the same perfume value in here from the URL. Or if the user decided, for example, to copy the URL, just to bookmark it or save it or share it with a colleague or a friend, you can easily just get the exact same page you were seeing without any issues. So to better understand why using URL search parameters or actually keeping the state inside of the URL, instead of like keeping it inside of the state itself using something like use state, or if using a global store or something like that. So for example, in here, this application here, which is like a product store that you have like a search kind of like bar in here, just to mimic how like, you know, kind of like a store would work, look like, like a product store and how you can search on it. So the search in here for this particular application here is just going to give you the ability, like whenever you type something, for example, oh, I want to search for a Samsung, sort of like a phone or a product. As you in here, if you notice on the top in here, on the search parameters, on the search URL, you're going to find, oh, there is a new variable called search and it has the value, like the value of the search we have in here. That means we are actually keeping the states, like the application stage or the search states in here for the products inside of the URL instead of the actual application itself. Because keeping it on the application just makes it non shareable. It only stays in the application. And if you just reload the page, all the state is gone. But simply keeping the state inside of the URL is going to allow you to do that particularly. For example, in here, if you try to reload, as Chris in here, it works smoothly. Like it keeps the state because it knows that we're like we were looking for Samsung and it grabs that state from the URL. But in the contrary, if we don't actually put the state inside of the URL, we only keep the state inside of the application itself. Let's say, for example, I want to search for Samsung or something. So I get into Samsung in here. That's pretty cool. But we notice on the top there, there's no state. There's no search value that is being kept inside of the URL or something like that. Now, like whenever I reload, nothing is going to stay there. And let's say I wanted to share the URL in here with somebody else. For example, I want to just copy the product URL, like for example, the Amazon product URL, eBay, some sort of store, any kind of page in there. So I want to just copy the URL, the, the exact same search where I put in here and share it with my friend just to tell him or with my wife, I'll tell you, oh, look at this product. Should we grab this for the house or something like that? It's not going to work because you're literally not keeping any state inside of the URL. And just like when you copy the URL, the URL is going to be empty. And if you're ever going to paste it again, you're just going to find nothing. But when you keep the state inside of the URL in here and you try to copy, for example, the URL and you try to paste it, there you go. Like as soon as you paste it, you share it with somebody, he accesses the URL, you're going to find all everything pretty much you're going to, he's going to basically see the same page that you were seeing with the exact same search. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So let's go ahead and see how you can implement that inside of React. Now, likely for us, there's a really awesome library that's called use query parameters. And this basically just kind of kind of like gives you the same look and feel and the same API of when you use like use state, but it actually gives you the ability instead of saving the state locally, just inside of the component itself tracks and it kind of synchronizes the state inside of the URL. So like whenever you just look on into there, you're going to find the, the new variables puts inside of the URL itself. And yes, this library has a lot of things, a lot of examples, it has a really, really good support. A lot of people are actually using it. And the most important part it actually supports many different frameworks. For example, in here, it supports like React Router. So if you want to use like React Router version six, or as I do in here, as in this particular story, I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the vanilla window history API. So everybody can be just on track. And you don't need to use any framework because you know, that's that's literally the standard uh, window or browser API for just communicating with the actual, you know, the the URL in here to grab the URL and everything or navigation in general. So if you want to use react Router for this one, it has actually support and it has different adapters for each. And now for actually holding the state and to keep track of the actual state in here, we've got like a store folder. And this actually we're creating like a store sort of like using a zoo stand. So if you're not familiar with zoo stand, I have a video on it. So you can go in and check it out. But using zoo stand in here, we're going to create like a global store that's going to allow us to manage everything and keep track of everything. So first, we need to keep track of all products. And this actually going to hold everything like all the products. And the second one, the product is going to hold like the currently filtered out product because we're going to do filtering. So you have to keep both. 
Second in here, we have to do, oh, set products and set all products in here just to set them on the state. And last but not least, we need another method in here to filter out all the products. Simply the filtering in here, we're doing, oh, filtering through title one, we, we're accepting all the products in here, and we simply just go through those. Oh, if it, like we say, oh, if product title doesn't exist, we just simply, you know, revert back to all the products. Otherwise, in here, just go through the filtering in here to check, oh, if every single product in here, just look through every single one of them, and does it include any product title? Of course, you can customize this however you want, but just we want a super simple kind of filtering logic. And last but not least in here, we set the new filtering to replace the current lead products. Awesome. Now our, for our search bar in here, that's actually where all the magic happens. For the search bar in here, it first takes on search kind of function. Now this function in here, what it does basically behind the scenes is actually just go ahead and call this particular one. It calls the filter products method to filter out everything. The second thing in here, we need to use our library, which is gonna grab that use query parameter from it, which is like, you know, another hook. And that's basically has the same API of a use state where it gives you first the value. The second is actually the set value in here to update the value and technically this behind the scenes is going to update and synchronize the state with the actual search parameters URL. Awesome. The first parameter actually takes in here, what is the value of the actual URL we want? So like the variable inside of the URL, like the variable of the search parameters to keep or hold the particular state. And here, this one in particular, I really like this one. So it tell you, oh, this search in here is going to be a string parameter. So it just knows immediately that that's actually a string. You can actually use a number parameter, you can use different stuff like an object, whatever you want, but most of the time it's just gonna stick with a string. All right, cool. Now the second thing in here we need is actually to grab all the products. So we need, we need to go ahead through our story here to grab all the products because when we search, we need to pass in all the products. The second one, we also need to keep the state like another state variable in here using use state that actually is gonna hold the actual state for the internal input like value in here. Next, we need to actually go ahead and use debouncing. And for this one, we're using use memo to create another function of the search value because, you know, immediately whenever you call this one, it's going to immediately set it on the URL. So we don't want to actually call that one too much, especially because we're typing on an input. And when you type on an input, you're going to have like each character is going to be input by its own. That means you're going to call this function in here for every single character you type on your keyboard. You really want to actually avoid that. So you can use a debounce function from Lodash. And next thing in here, you actually want to create another function in here to handle the search. So this basically is going to be like put inside of the input in here, our search input, like whenever it changes, just updates that on the state. Of course, that's going to update it on this like internal state we put in here, like that's the one that's actually using use state. The next one in here, we are actually going to use use effects. The reason to use use effects is basically we need to actually look and actually listen for any changes inside of the input value, which is the state that we're actually keeping internally. And whenever something actually changes inside of that one, we're going to call the debounce search or debounce set search value in here to update the value inside of the URL and actually keep track of it. Otherwise, it's just not going to work perfectly if you just try to call this one without using an internal state. So basically using it this way is going to fix you and, and actually give you a lot of opportunities to fix a lot of kind of bugs. So that should make it work perfectly. And last but not least, we need another use effect in here. Now the use effects can actually look for the search value. So whenever the search value and the search value in here, remember the search value is actually the value is going to be synchronized with the state and with the actual URL. So whenever this one actually changes, and if we have an on search function, we're just going to simply call on that search function. And this function is actually going to take it from there to filter all the products depending on the value we put on the input. All right, perfect. And of course, for the GSX in here, it's pretty simple. We just got us like an input in here. We pass it the input value. Remember, this is actually the internal value we have. So just it could work perfectly. And of course, just passing it some handle search and stuff like that, like a base holder. So everything should work fine right now. All right, let's go ahead and jump and see how it actually works. So if you go back to our application in here and go to, for example, Samsung, excuse me, whenever you clear out the actual in input value in here, like for example, if you try to put, oh, I want an Apple iPhone or something, it doesn't exist, it's just gonna show you nothing. But instead, if you just do a perfume or something, it's gonna give you all the perfumes in here. And the most important part, as we're in here on the URL on top in there, it just like synchronizes, it has exactly the same value as you have on the search bar in here. So everything is synchronized and all your states are saved inside of the URL itself. So like whenever you type a screen, if you notice on top in here, it's going to be serialized for you, it's going to be synchronized for you. And of course, it takes a little time to actually populate that one because we're using some debouncing. So that's actually a really good performance take. 
Now, there's actually one teeny tiny thing left, which is very important, is actually reloading and actually like extracting or basically retrieving the state from the URL and actually putting the state inside of the search in here, which is working right now, but it's not actually applying the state to filter out the product. So for example, here we have perfume in here, let's go ahead and reload the page. Now, if we reload the page, as you see in here, the state is synchronized because that's actually working out of the box from our library in here, because it just like goes and reads that whenever we're on you reload, when the component is trying to mount, it's gonna read that from the URL, it's like gonna give you the value in here, it's gonna populate the search input in here for you automatically. That's pretty cool, but that doesn't actually mean it's gonna work automatically with filtering out the products right out of the box. So let's go ahead and fix that. So here, we need to add another use effects in here, right below this one is actually checks for all the products. So all the products are actually going to be changed. And remember, all the products are going to be changed only once when all the products are going to be fetched at like the first time when the page reloads, or when the component mounts. So this literally, is, we are, we are basically guaranteeing that this one is going to only be called once. So we can just check, oh, if all products actually change and we just go inside of that one. Now for this one, we can use like a special function, we just like get URL parameters. So we're not gonna basically rely on the library. So we need to create another function in here. This get URL parameter in here is just gonna go ahead and use the, like the window location API in here. Let's create and use it like, oh, URL search parameters. And it goes in access window location dot search and actually grabs the query. And of course, when it grabs the query in here, just gonna go ahead and return the value so we can access it. Awesome, so you grab the search query in here. If we check, oh, if it's search query and we have on search, we simply just go ahead and call on search in here for it to filter route everything or all the products when the component is like, you know, remounted or basically when we reload the page or basically when we copy the URL, we give it to somebody else like a friend or his colleague and he tries to access that same URL, we need to actually try to filter out all the products from, you know, particularly the variable that is actually inside of the URL itself. So now if we try to save this one, go back in here, excuse me, we have perfume, let's go ahead and reload. That should work. As clearly in here, when we reload, it works basically fine. If we put something that doesn't exist and I try to reload, I still get the same result in here. So that means it works actually on the two ways. When it syncs from the search bar to the URL, and the second one, it actually syncs from the URL, like when you reload or share the URL, directly from the URL in here, grabs the variable, it parses it, it just populates with it the search bar in here, and it does the filtering for you perfectly. And of course, you can use basically this library, I just tried to go through a very simple example in here, kind of like, you know, a very common example with search bars and people trying to filter out and keeping track of the, you know, the search value inside of the URL itself. So I tried to go through this example in this particular video tutorial, so you can guys see exactly what's happening behind the scenes. But of course, you can use this library, the use query parameters library, like however you want, you can basically do a lot of things with it. And of course, if you're wondering how we are rendering the products, we're so just rendering a product as simple as that we're just grabbing the products from the global store we created. And we just like, you know, this is actually the first time when we fetch, that's pretty cool. But for rendering, we use the products, we loop through the products, and we just awesome. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed that was actually a really quick kind of video that tries to actually give you a good example of when you should use like URLs to keep state and store the variables with react with a really awesome library. So I hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in the next ones.